Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. Longtime viewers of my channel know that I don't get stuck on any one way to do something. I like to try out different ways to do it. So in this one, in turning this bowl, I'm not going to use cold jaws to finish the bottom. Actually, I'm going to finish the bottom earlier with a technique commonly used on platters, but and that is a mortise in the bottom. But I, then again, I don't like deep, ugly mortises, so I'll show you how I like it and how to do it. At the end, I will buff this bowl, and I haven't shown this for a long time, but essentially this is a spindle extender matched to my lathe spindle over here. But the other end is for these bowl buffs. Uh, they screw into the other end. It's a 3 8 uh, 16 bolt, I believe it is. And uh, so I just change those out very quickly uh, to run it on my lathe. I like that process so much that I actually adapted these larger buffs to go on there too. All it took was a 3 8 by 16 bolt with a nut and they work there too. So, by the way, this would be quite dangerous to use on a bowl of this size. Uh, so, the bowl buffs are much better. So, let's go ahead and turn this nice bowl out of Porto Corpos. I received this block of wood from my club's wood exchange raffle. Whoever had it before labeled it as Porto Crepus. I looked it up on the internet and believe it to be Porto Carpus. Quilt, which is often referred to as Japanese yews. However, they are not a true member of Taxus genus. Unquote. When I start to turn wood that has a flat side, especially if the sides are parallel, most often I simply press the wood against closed chuck jaws with only live center pressure. Second choice would be a screw chuck, but that takes time to drill the center hole of the correct diameter. This is quicker and I fail to see the advantage of the screw chuck in this way. In either case, I need a way to mount the wood for the next phase, but for now, I will start to round off this wood. It is easiest to cut from the bottom up with the side grain instead of straight into the edge, which would be harder end grain. Since I already have two good surfaces and a good thickness, I do not want to use a tenon for this bowl. Instead, how about a mortise? I measure for the mortise. By the way, I never touch dividers or calipers to moving wood. I think that is dangerous. With my smaller box scraper, I can form the initial mortise. It is tight against the live center, and I cannot cut out the center. The scraper, however, is wide enough to allow the jaws to seat flat, so I do not need to remove the center. This is a temporary mortise into what will be hollowed out in for the bowl cavity. Since I need a clean mortise and this is not it, I flip the block around into the mortise for a good solid mount now. After trimming back the surface, I mark for a second mortise where I have clear access. I cut the mortise a bit deeper than what I want in the final bowl because I also taper from the bottom ring down to the mortise edge. The mortise does not need a lot of wood to hold. However, the wood needs a bit more thickness to not split out. So, in the end, my mortise will appear very shallow. The taper hides the additional wood needed to prevent a blowout. Right here, I made a mistake. I flipped the bowl over and remounted it to start turning the bowl cavity. Things are going very well in the hollowing process until I realize my mistake. How will I finish sanding the bottom? Fortunately, I still have enough wood to cut a big mortise on this side that I could use to sand the bottom. I sanded the bottom side up through all the grits. That was a close one. Now back to hollowing the bowl. Since I had remounted the bowl again, 
I took a moment to trim the exterior slightly to remove any offset. Then back to hollowing the interior, removing that temporary mortise before the final hollowing. I still have the life center in place for security, especially with a small mortise mount. With most of the wood now gone, I cut out the remaining nub. Now I have to be more gentle with my gouge. Then switch from my bowl gouge to a heavy bowl scraper for the very bottom. Then I can sand everything except the underside. Now for its bath in walnut oil. The wood seems to like to absorb the walnut oil. I keep applying oil until it stops absorbing the oil. Then wipe it dry and let it set a couple of days. I feel that this bowl needs a good buffing. I'm using bowl buffs with Tripoli, White Diamond, and Carnauba Wax. With the small diameter buffs, I turn up the lathe speed to compensate. The buffs are mounted to a spindle extender, which gives me room to maneuver the bowl. I was not familiar with this wood. It was somewhat on the soft side, but was very consistent in density with no prominent grain differences. But it has enough pretty grain to be pretty and has a great mellow color. I wonder if I will ever get another piece of this wood to turn. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video and add it to my website. Please wear your full face shield. That's for safety anytime the lathe is running. I will see you next week with another wood turning video.